should be saying it's starting now, I think. Uh, beautiful. Yep, I can see a red light. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you kindly. <laughs> That's always good. Um, well, welcome along. I'll hand over to Kristen to start us off. <laughs> oh, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Kristen Sweeney, um, City of Casey Grants team. I'm here tonight with Rosie Sheehan. So Rosie's one of our Grants Development Officers. Um, this will be her first community grant round. So exciting for Rosie. Um, so before we get started, um, just like to acknowledge that the City of Casey proudly acknowledges the traditional owners, Casey's Aboriginal communities and their rich culture and pays respect to the elders past, present and future. We acknowledge Aboriginal people as Australia's first people and as the traditional owners and custodians on the land in which we work and live. And we also like to include our diversity and inclusion statement because we think it um, is a really fantastic statement and very, very relevant in the city of Casey. So the city of Casey is home to a remarkable diversity of cultures, languages, faiths, identities, landscapes and stories from our first Australians to our most recent arrivals and every way of between. The city of Casey welcomes and represents all community members and their respective ambitions to live healthy, rewarding and happy lives. These intersecting and overlapping community stories form Casey's collective identity and contribute to its evolving rich history. We recognise this diversity as our strength and we aim to share, nurture and celebrate it. So I think the Community Grants Program represents great diversity and inclusion as well because all of the different uh, projects that your organisations are running really reflect that um, diversity and inclusion in the city of Casey. Excellent. Thanks for that, Christian. Um, so obviously at nine o'clock this morning, bang, our grant round is open for the next financial year. Um, and as we've put up there, it closes at 5 p.m. sharp on the 26th of April. So just keep that in mind um, when you're applying. Um, obviously, when it shuts out, I'm sorry, you can't go back into it. So allow a bit of time when you start your grants. Um, as I said, my name's Rosie. I share this job. I work Monday to Wednesday and the lovely Jess Field works Thursday and Friday. Um, and obviously we have Kristen with us and we have Carolyn as well in our admin role. So all of us um, are checking out at um, the grants email regularly. So if you have any questions, let us know. Um, and Carolyn will help, Carolyn helps look after our acquittal process too. So um, that's our team. We're small, but we're happy to help with everything. Um, so the round has just opened, obviously. Groups can apply for a minimum of 1000 and up to $5,000. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, we sometimes partially fund applications too. We'll go into that more in a little bit. Um, but yeah, just keep in mind the minimum is $1,000. Um, and just be aware too, we only ask for one application per group or organisation. That sometimes trips groups up a little bit. So um, if you've got a couple of projects in mind, have a chat and whittle it down to just one that you apply for. Um, groups can apply for the same type of program or event each year. It doesn't necessarily mean you'll get that um, every time, but um, by all means you can apply for those sorts of things again. Um, and we do have equipment and training grants. We'll get to that in a little bit, um, but primarily these are for programs, events, activities and good things that you want to do um, for the community. So just be aware of that um, when you're putting in your application. Might flick to the next one if that's okay. So. The most important thing um, for community groups when you apply. Sorry, maybe one back. Sorry about um, that. No, that's okay. <laughs> um, it's a bit hard doing this <laughs> too, people. Um, is that you're not for profit group. So just keep that in mind. Sometimes we have had businesses try to apply. So just be um, aware that we need to have not for profit status. Um, and you need to be based in Casey or servicing residents of the city of Casey. Um, so by all means, if you're a large organisation like Salvation Army and things, if you're doing a program in the city of Casey, of course you can apply because it's for Casey residents that you're doing that for, but just keep that in mind. We want to deliver services and programs that benefit our community because that's what the funding's for. Um, now also um, with that, we ask that you have public liability insurance 
um, and that you're incorporated. If you're a smaller organisation, um, you can be auspiced, i.e. managed under the umbrella of a larger organisation. That means that we give the funds to that organisation um, rather than than the group um, if you don't have the insurance and the public liability. Um, but um, by all means, um, small groups can apply, um, just be aware of that. And when you put in your application too, we'll get to that in a little bit as well, but please remember to put your certificate of currency in for your insurance. It just saves us a phone call in chasing that. Um, so that's quite important because um, we just need to make sure that groups have a minimum of 10 million um, in insurance and that we know that you are covered for that. So might flick to the next one. So the all important part, the priorities of our program. Um, obviously, council has a significant amount of money to give to groups to do things. So we want to make sure that our groups have um, innovative and um, quality ideas that they want to do um, programs for. Um, as you can see on the list there, we want programs that promote sense of community, inclusion, um, particularly post COVID, everyone wants um, to, I guess, get connected again, get out there, do new things. So we're looking for that. Um, definitely the participation side. This year too, um, we're putting an emphasis and that's part of our council plan and things as well on sustainable living practices. So um, definitely if you have an environmental education program or something in that space, we're very keen to hear about that. Um, and obviously things like keeping engaged and healthy, active lifestyles, things that promote diversity and harmony as that beautiful um, statement says at the start. Um, we really encourage that. We've got so many cultures here. We love the smallest groups to the biggest groups doing events, activities that promote who they are and their heritage. And in that as well, that's part of all our council plans and things as well. So they're on our website. You might wanna tie in little things um, and quotes from our council plan and wellbeing plans they're all on there, um, but definitely we really want to promote our diverse, rich tapestry culture that we have out there in Casey. Um, so I might go to the next one. So um, how our grants are decided, um, and this is quite unique for me coming into Casey. I've been in other councils where it's just councillors. Here we have a beautiful array of volunteers who every few years put up their hands that they want to be in our community panel. We pick in this particular grant seven community members to be on the panel. Um, they're trained um, and they um, obviously read through all of your grant applications. They're from all around the city. They're different backgrounds, different genders, different locations. Um, so basically when you write your application, I really encourage you to think you're writing it that your neighbour, someone down the street, someone at the local shops might be reading it who don't know about your group. So really promote who you are and what you're wanting to do. These community members come together in our panel sessions. They grade um, each application out of a certain, certain point scoring system and then they meet together and we decide as a panel um, who gets the funding. So it's community members, not us as the council officers, not councillors. It's the community members who decide who they want to fund. Um, and then that recommendation goes up and it's endorsed obviously by us to distribute. But as I say, just when you're writing your application, just think in your head, I'm writing this to my next door neighbour. What would they want to know about our group? So that's probably a really good little hint there. And I'll go to the next one. And now, this is in obviously the guidelines, which I think you will have received, but also um, when you fill out your application too, our criteria, and this is how it's graded by the panel. And this is what they think about when they're scoring um, all the different elements. The most important thing um, when you're writing your application, and by all means, please write it with another person in your group as well. Think about what you're wanting to do, what's your purpose, why you're wanting to do this event, activity or program. Um, then obviously, can you demonstrate to us the need um, in the community? Because we're so diverse, you might be a small cultural group, there might be no other group that's delivering that service or in um, interest. So by all means, the smallest group to the largest group, we want to know and we want to fund you because you're delivering things that we might not necessarily be able to deliver otherwise. So I guess think in that terms of who's going to be there, and also the next aspect of how you're going to involve the community. 
Are you going to get volunteers? Are you going to be attracting people? Are you going to be activating a space? Um, who's going to come along? Who can be involved? Who might learn a new skill from this event or activity you're wanting to do? So definitely we want things that engage and get out there and promote what you are and our community and what you're doing. And I guess for us importantly um, and for our panel when they're assessing things, they want to know that your group can deliver what it is you're wanting to do. If it's an event um, and you're only a group of 30 people, you might not be able to deliver an event for 5,000 people, but um, you might be able to de deliver an event for 200 people. So I guess think about the what, why, where, who, how, how you're going to do it and who's going to do those different elements of the project. As I say, we fund small groups, we fund large groups. So by all means, don't be deterred if you're a small group. We still want to definitely hear from you. Um, because you might be catering to something no one else in Melbourne is. Um, I might flick to the next one. If that's yeah, sure. Right. I'll just add there, yeah, Rosie. Um, just write your grant application, um, assuming that the person reading it doesn't know anything about your organisation. So uh, you might be really well known in Casey. So I, I see Margaret's here from the Berwick Show. I'm sure she won't <laughs> mind her calling her out. Berwick Show's been going in Casey for, uh, I don't know, Margaret, I should know. 50 years, 25 years, um, and you might think that um, everybody knows about the Berwick Show and what it is, but uh, with our panel of assessors, they may be someone new to Casey. They might not have heard of the Berwick Show before. They might not have heard of your organisation before. So just don't assume uh, any knowledge that the assessor has any knowledge of your organisation uh, or your project. Um, it's a good tip there. Thanks, Kristen. Uh, How many years is it, Margaret? Yeah. Uh, it'll be 175 years oh. next year. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> 1848. So. I was thinking it was in the hundreds and I thought, no, <laughs> surely not. So, there wow. you go. Thank you, Margaret. No, that's perfect. Um, and as I say, these are our funding categories for this year. Um, we're being positive. We've had a COVID focus in the last few years. Um, we're hoping that's hopefully turning a corner now. Um, so this year, environmental sustainability has come into our mix um, for categories for the funding there. So when you're thinking of your project, think what it might fit into best. We don't have a separate category for events as such, um, but as I say, you might be more in the diversity and harmony space and things. So just think which category um, best represents what you're wanting to do when you're doing um, your application. So we'll go to the next one now. Um, and this is on our website too. Um, you can have a look at what we've funded in the past financial year. Um, so all sorts of different groups there, all sorts of age groups, cultural groups, diverse groups there um, that we do fund. Last year, we had 101 applications come through um, for the grants, which are slightly down on previous years, primarily due to COVID, lots of groups um, had to roll over funding from previous years. So probably about another 40 or so applications, we'd normally get about 140, 150, I believe, um, Kristen. But this year, that last, sorry, last year we only had 101, but they were requesting $422,000. Um, so 93 of those applicants were able to be funded last year. Um, 63 got full funding and 30 got partial funding. So we'll get to that question when it comes to um, in the form and things, but think about if you're doing something, could you do if you only got partial funding? Um, by no means do you have to say um, yes or no, or if, you, if you definitely couldn't do your program without it, by all means, let us know. Um, but if you could do a program with partial funding or an event or activity, um, that question is in there because it does help our panel. Sometimes the panel wants to give as many groups as possible funding. Um, so just bear that in mind as you do your application that that might be an option. And as I say, look at what we funded last year. There's a lot of different things there. So that gives you a good idea of what you might be able to apply for. Um, yeah, this, the success rate for our grants is really good for community organisations. So if you're new to grant writing, um, your local council grant's probably going to be a really great place to start. Um, you know, we've got a lot of um, a, a good funding pool there uh, and, you know, it's often in the 80 to 90 sort of success rate that you will get funded. So uh, even mm -hmm. if you're new, just give it a go. We're, we're going to be... A, the best place for you to apply, especially if you're new to grant writing. 
Excellent, thanks. And as I say, we're here to help. We've got four staff between us. We can answer and my colleagues have seen lots of different things, so they're more than happy to help um, with that. So we just clicked over to what won't be funded. Um, so as we noted before, please only put in one application. Don't put in multiples. <laughs> um, some groups do make mistake and um, we want events to be held in Casey. Obviously we're funding um, Casey, the council, it's 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 their rate money and things. So we want the benefit to be for Casey residents. Um, we also don't fund through this grant um, capital works items. So if you're a footy club, we're not going to fund you new change rooms through this. There's other rounds and other different programs we can connect you in with if it's a capital physical item, but this is not, um, as I say, the one for that. We also don't fund operational costs. So your staff wages, your electricity, your ongoing insurance and things. So just be aware of that. Don't include those sort of costs in there um, and as we said to um, just think about what you're applying for um, sometimes we, we we can fund the same sort of programs but we do like diverse things to be funded um, and as it says to obviously not something that promotes one actual religion or faith or things for individuals although that'd be nice wouldn't it I must say but we don't fund individual celebrations and things and prizes and things in those categories so just be aware of that um, we don't do retrospective funding. I need to make that clear. So please, um, we can't fund something that you did a month ago. So um, it has to be obviously for future. Um, and we can't fund things outside the current financial the financial year that you're applying for. Um, so just be aware of that too. Um, I might go to the next one. Um, and this is um, probably quite important to note. We have a separate grant funding pool for equipment and training. If you need something, if you're doing an event um, and you need a piece of equipment to deliver that event, that can be considered. But if you're funding something like first aid training or you're wanting to buy new mouth guards for your football team or something, that's an equipment and training grant. It's a separate um, item um, and we have a separate grant round coming up in about July for that. So please be aware um, that, yeah, have a think. Um, just make sure you're doing a program event sort of thing it's not for equipment and things. So I think, yeah, just be aware. And if you're unsure, please ask us. Um, so really quickly, the five key, five key things to make sure that you nail it for your application. And that's quite important because we want to, as, as we said, we want to fund our groups out there. And what we're looking for um, is that we want you to describe what you're doing quite clearly, as we say, Neighbour down the road's reading it, tell us what you're doing, as if they don't even, as I say, if we don't know who you are and what you're doing. Um, describe what you're wanting to do and what you're aiming to do, um, why it's needed, and particularly, um, as I'm saying, for community groups that are cultural and diverse and things, you might be the only group that's delivering a mental health and wellbeing program for young African Sudanese boys or something. So we want to know that. And if you have some statistics or anecdotal evidence or look on our web page. We have an awful lot of um, stats and things on there. We can direct you to where that is as well if you get stuck. Um, pull some of that data in because we are very diverse, very culturally um, diverse. So yeah, we just tell us, um, let us know um, if we're not meeting a need or a service or if that's suddenly popped up, particularly post-COVID, let us know. Um, obviously, what you want to achieve um, from that, you might want to improve your membership or raise awareness about something. So let us know what it is you want to achieve from your project or event, or as I say, promote healthy wellbeing um, for a group. And the budget, which we'll go into in just one second, I'm going to flick over to Kristen for that. But um, that's probably another really important thing to get. So I'll flick over to you now if that's all right and sure no problem yep. thanks Rosie I'll, I'll um, have a look at the budget when I go through the Smarty Grants um, site mm. for you but we just like to put the budget up there because it is a, a question that trips up um, a lot of groups um, and it is something that the panel the assessment panel often ask uh, for clarification on budget items so uh, provide as much detail as you can. Um, you know, don't just list venue hire, uh, but say venue hire for work workshops for eight weeks. So then uh, the assessment panel member really gets a, an idea of um, what that cost is for. Uh, obviously, you're planning your project. You don't know often exactly how many participants you're going to get. Um, you know, 
which will impact on what some of the costs are. But just just do it to you know what you what you think you're going to be able to achieve for your project. Um, you can always you know change it. Obviously, um, the number slightly when you're running your project. So we would like to know uh, all of the income. So you've got the what you've applied for in the grant, but you're probably going to have some other income from that project as well. So you might be having participant fees, you might um, have a business that's going to sponsor you, um, you might be selling some items at, a, at an event or something, uh, and your organisation might contribute something as well from some of the money that you've got in reserves. Uh, so put all of that in um, your income. Uh, with expenditure, like I said, please put as much detail as you can. Uh, then the panel has confidence that you've really um, planned out your project, you thought about what the different costs would be uh, and you've budgeted for those. Uh, so just detail those in the expenditure side. So we say the budget should add up. So that just means the total income should be the same as the total expenditure. Um, each grant line doesn't have to add up. We just want the total to add up. Uh, and when I show you in Smarty Grants, uh, it actually does the adding up for you. So you don't need to, you don't need to put that in. Um, don't put any in-kind in the budget table. There's a separate question for that. Uh, we know that organisations put in a lot of in-kind contribution in terms of volunteer hours or uh, professional services or goods that have been donated to them. Uh, so we do want to know about that, but just not in the budget table. Excellent. Um, just having a look if there's anything else there in the notes. I'll talk about that a little bit more anyway when we look at the um, at the Smarty Grants, but just that's just an example there. And we do actually put an example in the application form for you to have a look at as well. And yes, uh, so yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, spoke about in-kind contributions. So that's usually uh, the hours that your volunteers contribute to a project. Um, I think we normally you normally would you know sort of calculate that at about twenty five dollars an hour for normal volunteer hours. If you've got someone who does your um, accounting um, for free and that sort of thing, you might want to put that at a higher professional rate uh, per hour. Uh, you might be using your own photocopier uh, to run off flyers for your program. You're probably using stationary stuff you've already purchased. Uh, so that's sort of all the in-kind contribution. So it's just showing that, it's uh, showing council that your organisation is behind this project and you're, you know, you're willing to put in some of your own time and resources uh, to run that project. Do you want to go on with sure. that bit, Rosie? That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Um, so now the, the important stuff, as um, we said, there is a very good success rate. So by all means, we want to see those applications. Um, when the panel has met, um, it's usually late July that we send out our successful, unsuccessful letters. So, yep, um, we will let you know by then. Um, for that um, and then we send out the relevant paperwork so that we can pay you into your bank account. So that's quite important. So then you can get underway um, with your program or project. Um, and it's really important, um, as my colleague Carolyn will say, um, that you keep all your receipts for what it is you're going to do as well. Um, we have obviously our acquittal process and we can be audited at any time too with our grants because obviously we're spending your ratepayer funds on things. So we want to make sure um, that, yeah, please just keep those receipts um, so that that can happen. And, yeah, I know Carolyn is very good at chasing things up. Even if you've got 50 Coles receipts, um, I do need to stress if you've done a big event or something, please keep them all. You will need to scan and send them in because we need to make sure that we can account for every dollar that's been sent in our um, grants and things. Um, so I'll flick back now. Um, I think we're going to go into a live demo if yeah. that's okay yeah so. I might just stop sharing for a second so that I can <laughs> flick over take stock here uh, so what are people's experience with Smarty mm. Grants has is anyone totally new um to Smarty Grants I don't want to Take yourself off mute and just let me know. Just want to just see how much detail you'd like me to go into for the online uh, demonstration. I've used it before. Oh, yeah. 
most people have used it before, I'd say. I've had a look, but I haven't. I, yep. I'm not totally comfortable with it, let's just say. Okay. Which organisation are you from, Vivian? Chorus Connect. Okay, excellent. Yep. Great. All right. Well, I'll um I'll just share my screen again. Um, so this is the uh, City of Casey website where the information is um, with all of the community grants information. So uh, basically, what we've been through tonight will be will be here. We we got all the you know the guidelines who can and can't apply the categories all of that sort of thing so that information is all there for you um, so to apply you just click on the apply online button and that takes you through to uh, the city of Casey smarty grants um, page where all of our grants are hosted so this is the one we would want to apply for the 22 23 community grant so we just click on there you can preview the form before you actually go in and start a submission. So you can just click on that and just have a look at the questions and that sort of thing. If you don't want to start a submission yet, you can also download the form if you wanted to share it with anyone from within your organisation. But here's just a little bit of information that you might like to read if you're new to Smarty Grants. It just tells you how to navigate through the application form, stressing to save your draft, mm -hmm. um, attaching documents, spell checking, that sort of thing. And it just talks about internet browsers which ones are good and not so good to use um, for Smarty Grants. So we want to start a submission which will take us through to the login or register page. So if you're already a Smarty Grants um, user, you just need to log in. Um, if you're new to Smarty Grants, you haven't registered before, you then click register and then it will ask you to uh, put your name on your organisation and to create a password. Uh, but probably most people um, will already be users um, if you know uh, your email but you've forgotten your password just click the forgotten password and that will then um, send you an email to then uh, go and reset your password okay so we're into the form there so um, Please use an email address that you're actually going to um, check for emails um, because when we add any forms in Smarty Grants and that sort of thing, it is that email address that you registered with that, who will receive, that will receive notification that um, a form or something's been added in Smarty Grants. So we often say for, uh, for say, clubs, if you've got a organisational email, so like president at Berwick Football Club or, you know, treasurer at... Chorus Connect, use those um, emails. So that just means when you leave the organisation or leave that community group, then you're not going to be getting those emails. It'll be the organisation that's getting those emails. Um, but just please make sure it's an email address that's, that's checked regularly. So this is page one of the form here. Anything that has a red asterisk is a mandatory question. So that means that you must put an answer there and you won't be able to submit your form until you do have an answer there. Um, you won't see these response required when you first log in. That's only because we've opened the application form and closed it again. It's just reminding you that those are mandatory questions. So just all the usual information, organisation details, contact person for the grant, uh, someone else from within your organisation who knows about the grant application being made and endorses it. Um, and that just gives us another email address if we're uh, not able to get in touch with you, then we've got a second contact uh, that we're, a we're able to contact with a phone number and email address. So just filling in there. Um, so save as you go uh, is probably best. Um, you can save your progress uh, so that you don't lose any information. You can just click next page at the bottom. Or you can navigate between pages here on the right hand side, there are different pages. So we just want to know about your organisation, um, what your corporation number is. If you don't know, you can check with this link here, Consumer Affairs website, uh, your ABN. Um, I've put one in here, so that just 
um, if you do have an ABN, just write it in here and click look up and then that your organisation details will come up there. So that tells us as council that no, they're not registered for GST, um, what sort of entity you are um, and, and that sort of thing. So just on GST, if you are registered for GST, you'll be paid the grant amount plus GST. So you could apply for $5,000, but you'd actually receive $5,500. Um, if you're not registered for GST, you just receive the grant amount. If you don't have an ABN, so Rosie was talking about smaller organisations, you might not have an ABN yet, and that's fine. We don't mind. You're still able to apply, but you just need to complete something called a statement by supplier form, which is actually an Australian tax office form, um, which is uh, just a requirement to say why you're receiving funds, but you don't have an ABN. It's just sort of a checks and balance with the with the ATO there. And there's a bit of information here with these links if you wanted to find out a little bit more about the statement by supplier form. Uh, so insurance here, um, you can upload your files. So you just click choose files. It will then take you to browse your files on your computer. So if you have something saved on your desktop, that's usually easier. Uh, you just click on that and, and add the file there. Um, if you find it's the wrong one, once there's a file there, there'll be a little cross and you can um, take that away and add something else. So I can click next page or I can just go up to the navigation bar for page three. Uh, so this is just where you need to give us a little bit of information about your organisation and its activities. So as you can see, it's counting the words as I go. Um, so we just ask for no more than 200 words here because um, just think that uh, an assessor might be reading over 100 applications. Um, so a, a sort of a short, sharp description of your organisation and its activities is good there. Uh, remembering to save as you go. If you need to save and close, that's fine. You can go out of it uh, and go back in again. I'll show you that um, in, in a little bit. So these are the categories um, that Rosie mentioned. So look, it, you're probably going to go between a couple of categories um, sometimes, and that's fine. Uh, the categories is more just so that we can group like applications with like applications so the assessment panel can better compare those applications. Um, so we put we tend to put all the arts and cultural activities together. So they look at those applications in a group and they can assess those and compare those against each other. Um, we may feel that you sit in a uh, better in a different category and we may actually change that category. So it, it's not, um, you know, hugely important. Don't stress if you if you not sure what category you're in or if you feel you go over a couple of categories. This is where we want to know how much you're requesting from the grant program. So um, it says must be a dollar amount because we, we're not really interested in any cents. Um, we just want dollars um, with a minimum of 1,000 and the maximum 5,000 there. Um, remember that number because you'll then have to put that number in your budget. Uh, so these are probably the most important questions. Describe your program event, what you're aiming to do. We've got the word count again here, so it will count it up as you go. Um, these questions with the word count, if you went to 302 words, it wouldn't let you submit the application. You'd have to go back and edit that answer so that it was no more than 300 words. But 300 should be plenty of um, words for you to be able to describe your program or event. Um, the start date here, that's just a calendar. So you just click on the calendar, um, then just choose the date. Uh, if it's a just a daily event, then just click um, the, the start and the finish date is the same date. That just shows us that it's a one day event. This is just to help us how you heard about the program, just so that we can see what sort of promotions working and that sort of thing. Um, and then here's the criteria. So this is where you're really going to be assessed on your answers because um, this is showing how your program meets the criteria of the grant um, and the criteria, the priorities of the grant program. So carefully put your answers here. This beneficiaries is um, 
has drop down lists, so it provides all of that for you. So you might be doing adolescents who are males. Um, who are Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders. So I think you can pick oh, maybe up to six different fields there. Um, so that just helps us know who's going to be benefiting from the program. Um, just general questions here. Um, where we want to know uh, what sort of experience you've had in delivering similar programs and events, just so that the assessment panel can be confident that you're you've got the skills and resources to be able to uh, deliver the project. We just give you some um, ideas about evaluation there. Um, now we'd like you to upload your recent financial statement for your organisation. So if you're in an incorporated organisation, you probably have to do your, um, you know, your annual statements every year when you have your annual general meeting uh, and usually report those to Consumer Affairs Victoria. So if you haven't done last financial year, that's fine. Just please um, upload the, the most latest financial statements that you have uh, for your organisation. That also demonstrates uh, organisational capacity to uh, the panel that, you know, that they're confident that you're able to manage your finances and meet your obligations as an incorporated organisation. Don't forget, save as you go. Um, you don't want to uh, lose the work that you've done. Uh, so then we've got the program budget here. Please, once again, just dollar amounts is fine. Um, we don't need any cents there. Put in the, the amount that you're asking for from the City of Casey and then go ahead and, and put those in uh, like I demonstrated in the previous slide. It adds up automatically for you. So... Um, we've got here... You can see then that that adds up for you. So you know your income equals your expenditure if this is zero here. So please make sure that those um, add up. And there's just a um, example of a budget there. This is where you can put your in-kind contributions here. And the partial funding question. So Sometimes the panel might want to fund um, more applications uh, but not have the funding pool to do it. So they might decide to recommend some applications for partial funding uh, or they may not agree to fund uh, a particular item in your budget. Um, or they may feel that, you know, the organisation can put in more of a contribution, something like that. So um, this is where we want to know could your project still take place if you only receive partial funding? Uh, so if you tick yes, you should then let us know what is the minimum amount it would need for your project to still take place. So if you're thinking, well, we're asking for 5,000, but yep, we would, we could receive partial funding of maybe $3,000. Then we ask you what changes would you need to make if you only receive $3,000. So that just gives the panel a little bit more flexibility if they only want to um, provide partial funding, they can see what the impact would be on your organisation. If you definitely cannot um, do it for any less than what you've written in your application, then just say no there. So that just means that uh, the panel knows they either have to give you full funding or no funding at all. Um, but if you do tick no there, then just, just know that if they don't agree to give you partial funding, then they'll, they won't um, allocate any funding if you said that no there. Um, this next part is really about um, event running an event in Casey and event approval. Um, so if you tick any of these five sections here, that isn't a trigger for an event approval. So that just means that um, if you're having road closures of any kind, if you're having fireworks, serving alcohol, 
putting marquees and stages or if you're going to be filming, then our events team needs to know about your event and they'll work with you through the event of approval process. So it might only be something uh, very minor um, or if you're running a big, say a big festival in a park or something like that, then there's probably going to be a lot more event approval that's required. But there's some really great resources on the City of Casey website uh, and the events officers will work with you um, to help you to um, plan your event, run it safely. Uh, and if you're wanting the resources, they're just linked here, links back to the City of Casey website. If you've spoken to an events officer, just give us their name there so that um, if we've got any queries, we know who uh, to contact. Uh, and if you are successful and you're running an event that does require event approval, uh, we want to uh, hear from the events team that yes, you've made contact and you're well underway with your event approval process before we'll pay you the grant funding. Um, so this last page is really just the um, declaration that you're authorised to be able to um, submit on behalf of your organisation. Um, everything's true and correct to the best of your knowledge. Um, you'll, if you're successful, you abide by the conditions of the grants policy. And this one, um, do you give permission to share your contact details with other officers? Um, as council officers, we're always in touch with each other. Um, you know, we might be in touch with the uh, access and inclusion team that's that say, look, you know, there's a really, I'm running a program for um, Afghan women. Do you have any organisations that you funded that you can put me in touch with? We can't really share your contact details with those other council officers unless you've ticked yes there. So if you're happy for us to give other officers your email so they can contact you, then please tick yes there if you'd rather not. Um, you can tick no. So then at the end you do review and submit and it would then go back and tell you that there are some things you need to do before you're able to submit your application. So it will then go and tell you you haven't written anything here, it's a required question and that sort of thing. Um, once you've gone back and done that you would just um, click submit, that will, that will al allow you to submit once you've finished everything uh, and you'll know that you've submitted um, successfully, you'll receive an email to say that your application has been received and there'll be a PDF version of your application form attached to that as well. You can download a PDF so if you want to fill in most of the application form, not submit it yet, download a PDF and share it with your committee, that's always a good idea and get some feedback from them. Um, you can do that here, just download PDF there um, and then your form will come up there. So you're able to then email, save that and email that around. Um, just reminding you, submit it before 26th of April at 5 p.m. and close. So um, if you want to then go back to that form, um, once it's closed, you would then uh, log back in, so don't register, log back in, and then you'd go to My Submissions. <clears throat> when you go, go to My Submissions, it has all of the submissions that that, your organi that, that email address has um, submitted. You then go to this application form, and that's opened up then, uh, uh, then again for you. So, what? any questions about... Um, now the I might, grant system. Yeah, do you want to stop I might recording, stop recording yeah. if that's okay, so people can feel 